So I bought this little Luna guitar uh, a couple of months ago, and I really like it. It's really nice to sit at the computer because it's so small, the body. Um, but I've been playing it, and I noticed that <clears throat> inside there is a broken brace. Can you see that? If you push it with your knee, it really kind of opens up. So I'm going to try to glue that today and jam something in there to hold it tight to fix it because it's been really bugging me and here are the custom tools i made this is a uh, toilet paper roll with a piece of pipe insulation to kind of squeeze so i can stick something in between the top of the guitar and the brace and push it down once i get the glue in now this thing this is just as slick. Xfinity sponsored. It's one of those fake credit card things that come in the, the mail all the time. Uh, it's a piece of paper. I'm going to put glue all over it to slather it in between the brace and wipe it back and forth. And obviously the length of coat hanger here so that I can get in there. It's a small hole to begin with. So I'm going to do a couple of dry runs to make sure that you know this thing can actually go in there and not all crumple up or something like that and then I'm um, obviously gonna have to wipe up the mess from the glue and then stick that thing in to kind of clamp it and just leave it overnight and hopefully it will work well I'm surprised it actually uh, slithered in there I got the um, definitely some glue under the whole broken brace and now I have it push down with that, that toilet paper spongy thing and cleaned it up with a little bit of um, paper towels, warm water and now I just gotta let it sit overnight and I th actually think it's gonna come out well. And 24 hours later it looks really good. Can't even see it. Holding up the guitar feels much more solid. <laughs> Our cheap little guitar okay here's my new guitar body it's a uh, height Tysco deluxe it's a beauty look at those horns it's like I think they're supposed to be the same but obviously this one kind of goes wink I honestly when I saw the picture of this I actually laughed out loud I laughed so much that I like I had to buy it it was only, I got the, uh, it for 35 bucks. I made the guy an offer and he took it for 35 bucks. I wouldn't have gone any more than that on it, but I'm going to see if I can throw a neck on it. I actually have a vibrato tailpiece that looks exactly like the one that's on pictures that I've seen of them. So I have that to put on too. Don't have any pickups or electronics, but those will come later. Okay, one problem I have is a neck pocket and this is kind of narrow. I have this neck. It's an Eden neck. Um, I've had this one for a while. I had it on another guitar. I think it had a slight back bow to it, which kind of means that, you know, the strings kind of buzz out on it. So I'm hoping, uh, it doesn't look that bad now. Like maybe it's remedied itself or something from sitting around. Who the hell knows? But I'm going to try it, but I got to make it a little bit thinner to fit in the body. I'd rather mod the neck than the body. I must say too, this uh, neck pocket is pretty rough, so I'm going to sand the edges so that it's smooth at least here. And a smooth surface here, which will make better contact to the neck. I mean, you can see I sanded it a little bit, and it has these bumps from the old varnish buildup or whatever. That's not good. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit and see if I can get the neck to fit. I got the neck roughed in. Had to take off quite a bit, maybe a uh, 32nd of an inch on both sides. A little crude. Also had to round off these corners so that it fit in the pocket. And I might get a little better because I'm going to sand a little more, make it look nicer so it should go in a little bit more. Then I got to make a neck plate for the back, Ooh. which, pardon me.
which shouldn't be too bad. You can see the indentation there. I'll just measure, cut out a square of, I think I'll use aluminum. I have some aluminum. Uh, then measure down, you know, across like this and then longwise like that to find the holes. And uh, yeah, that'll be good. Wild fucking grain, huh? Not quite sure what kind of wood. Uh, I think they used to call this fruit wood. But I don't really know what that means. But that's what they used to say with a lot of these old uh, Japan import guitars. The front has a little um, little problem right here. But I can't even squeeze it. It doesn't even make a difference. So it's kind of like just the bindings moved away a little bit. I can live with that. Um, there's lots of checking cracks and stuff like that. But it's finished cracks. This is the only one that looks bad. But it's not a crack that goes through the body or anything. At least I don't think it is. And also, uh, the body has a sound post in it. If you can see that. You know, I'm trying to get it in the light. Right there, which is kind of impressive. They usually didn't used to do that. Not that it's great, but it kind of, you know, gives support to the arch top. And because there's going to be a vibrato on it. Oh, look, you can see the outline of the old vibrato. So there was a vibrato on it. Cool. So mine is going to be like a, almost a perfect replacement, I think. You'll see. It'll come up later. Now I kind of see the problem. I think somebody got a neck in here. It was too tight and they yoinked it. And they yoinked it up the top off a little bit. So I can get some glue down there and clamp it. Which The split goes from like down here in the neck pocket to about there. So I'm just going to clean it out with a razor blade a little bit. And blow some air through it and uh, glue it up with a clamp it'll be good as well usually one of the first things I do when I get a guitar is I clean it you know I hit it with like some lemon oil and just kind of rub the grunge off of it this time I did not and kind of the reason is is if you look you can kind of see the impressions of where the old plates were so this way I can get measurements and sizes of it and make, if I want to make replicas out of aluminum or tortoise shell or whatever, um, you know, it's kind of right there. And if I wiped it down with lemon oil, those would be gone. This one you can kind of see how it's like comes to a point there a little bit. And this side maybe not so much, but I'll probably do it on both sides since that has two screws. Looks like it's kind of messed up. But, I mean, look at the binding after all these years. I mean, many a Guild and Gretsch bindings have long gone. And, and this being a cheap Japanese import. I mean, there's binding in the F-holes, too, and it looks really good. It's a weirdo. It's kind of like, you know, it's like a retarded Trini, Trini Lopez guitar, Johnny A. Gibson guitar. You know, it just looks a little dorky. But it's, <laughs> that's why I like it. Okay, so we made some measurements for these parts I want to make for the Tysco. And the first thing I want to concentrate on is the neck plate, which is there. And I'm going to use this piece of street sign that I have. It's aluminum. About that thick. Should work. Steel's better, but you really shouldn't torque those screws down too tight because um, it'll actually warp a steel plate and it's, it's not good for the guitar neck. It just should be snug. So we're going to use this stuff. Hmm, well it's going to take some work to get that thing square. There's a lot of manual filing to get it in this kind of shape. Uh, but it's not looking too bad, so I think we're going to set up to drill some holes. Right, we got our pilot holes. Hopefully uh, they're about right. Uh, i got to find some screws and stuff and see how well this lines up. I hope it does. If you're wondering about that blue stuff, that's like a plastic coating on the aluminum. And that can either be sanded off or I think acetone takes it right off. So it'll be down to bare aluminum. Okay, we've got some holes and we got some screws so we can mount the neck. Pretty exciting. Okay, here's where we are right now. The neck is clamped on. It's not all the way seated. It's kind of delicate. So it's on the clamp. You can see that gap there. 
I want to get rid of that gap, so I'm going to have to round the corners down lower like a little bit. I got screws, one just fell out and hit the floor. Um, you can see they are um, tapered, so I'm going to have to like chamfer in the holes if I want to have them be flush, or I can use these things here to raise it up. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, but um, Jeez, I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. Cooler than I thought it was going to look. Um, yeah. So next thing is to round those corners a little more and get a better fit in the neck pocket. Well, that's a lot tighter. I think I'm going to go with that. That looks good. Okay, I started the screws just a tad. And then I'm going to drill some pilot holes for them, but this is to line them up. Neck looks straight, I hope. Looks straight to you. <laughs> well, here you can see the impressions that the screws made. Really close to the old holes. You can see this one. You can't even see one over here. So that, that didn't even get started. What I was going to do, and I was going to wait on this, but now i got to do it now, is I'm going to put dowels into these old holes and glue them up and sand it down nice and flat um, which will make you know these screws go in a lot sturdier so I guess I gotta do that now and since I gotta do that now I'm gonna glue up the uh, the top of, of the guitar to where I was splitting and clamp that up and then they'll have to sit overnight so we gotta drill out the old existing holes in the neck to accommodate the dowel it's a little bigger than 3 16 but I'm going to do the holes to 3 16 and then uh, glue them up and tap in the, uh, the dowel. So I prepare these little dowels. I just kind of round off the end so they can go in a little bit easier. Into the neck, I'm going to put some tight bond uh, glue in there and then just pound these in until they can't go no more. And then we'll cut off the excess after it dries. Yeah, pounded them in with my... Uh, Homemade ugly wooden hammer. I use this thing all the time. Uh, we'll uh, wipe up that excess glue and then we'll chop off what's sticking up after it dries. Well, I've got the glue in there. Got it clamped up. Looks pretty tight. There's a little gap down there. It's like a little piece of wood must have flown out. So I put on top of the tight bond, like a small strip of uh, Elmer's because it, it dries uh, clear where the tight bond is a little bit yellowish. So that should fill that void there. And we'll have to let this sit. Unfortunately, I guess that's the, all the work for today. And we'll work on it later. Okay, we got the tailpiece on. We got the neck on. Although, you know, everything will have to come off again. On and off, on and off. It's kind of the way it goes. Um, I put these, those washer things, I forgot what those are called. Just for now, so the screws don't go in too far and I don't have the, the neck plate chamfered or whatever. Um, but I'm going to make up some kind of uh, temporary bridge and we'll throw some strings on it. Let's see what it does. So I found this crappy old bridge that I have. Um, actually, the bridge itself isn't too bad. It's the base. It's kind of like junk. But um, they don't line up the way it is right now, the screw holes. But you notice that there's some other holes in there. I think I might have made those a long time ago. Um, look at that thing. A piece of junk. But I can move one of these to that hole and then it will fit to at least throw it on the uh, the body. So I'm going to do that. Mm, no, no. So I got a straight edge on the neck right now to kind of determine how high the bridge has to be. And the answer is that high. Which is, in a good way, I mean it's a doable thing. You got strings on it. It plays. It actually stays in tune. Of course, it's refinement time, so 
Some things are, I mean, the bridge is, for an arch top bridge, it's really low profile. And I could put a shim in the neck, which I'd rather not do. Or maybe I might make a bridge. I think that's what I might do. The, uh, the fake uh, Bigsby is doing a wheelie. And look at that handle. I can either bend the handle so it comes out kind of flat. Or I can try to get a, a smaller spring, a shorter spring for it. The action is pretty high, which means, you know, the bridge has to go even lower than this. So there's some things to think about. I mean, I'm going to leave it um, kind of as is for a while. Like I said, it's, you know, it's actually playable down there. And the neck doesn't seem to have that slight back bow that I thought it had. Maybe that went away over time. I, <laughs> I really don't know. But it's pretty cool. You know, it's kind of clanky. Um, let me see. Let's see what we can play. Let's tune down a whole step. Not ideal to play at all the actions for quite sure where I'll go from here but pretty cool pretty weird